Here we go. Here we go. Everybody, welcome back. Sorry again. Take three. We're going to try this one more time. Uh, so, uh, for some reason or other, I got um, flagged through YouTube that I had some kind of copyrighted audio video or something or other. Uh, my the, I didn't follow the community guidelines uh, for YouTube or whatever. So, we're going to try this again. Try it a third time. We've removed two photos from our um, presentation tonight in case that was what the cause was. So we're going to try that again. And if it's not this, then it means somewhere, somehow, uh, I have offended somebody. And if I have offended somebody, then I apologize. C'est-à-dire que on va essayer ça une, pour une troisième fois pour cet épisode ici. Um, pour une raison ou une autre, ça a l'air que quelque chose dans la diffusion directe que j'ai fait, uh, j'ai été flagué, soit que j'ai utilisé du uh, matière, uh, un contenu, je veux dire, uh, 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 copyright, soit que ça soit uh, vidéo, audio, ou que quelqu'un s'est plaigné que uh, j'ai... Well, les... les, les Les règles du com communauté, pour une raison ou autre, j'ai fait une erreur. Puis, fait qu'on va essayer ça une troisième fois. Maintenant, qu'est-ce que j'ai fait, c'est qu'on a regardé ça, moi et deux autres, euh, justement, euh, deux de mes, mes, mes followers euh, sur la chaîne, Marc et Lynn, merci pour votre aide. On a enlevé deux des photos dans la présentation en cas que ça l'était le problème. On va voir qu'est-ce que ça va donner. Euh, encore une autre fois, je vais répéter... Euh, les annonces de la semaine, c'est-à-dire que euh, en passant, je vais continuer à donner le euh, bienvenue Marc, thank you Marc, welcome to the channel, welcome Lynn, thank you both for your help. Uh, we're going to try this again. Um, I'm going to start again from the beginning. I'm going to so our weekly uh, announcements. I'll continue as I was saying. Uh, cette semaine, euh, je veux dire, c'est-à-dire La semaine prochaine, je retourne au travail en temps, au temps plein, euh, en temps plein, euh, où ce que Gosselin a décidé finalement de rouvrir les euh, salles de cours pour les cours privés euh, durant la semaine, durant le jour. Fait que je vais être là de lundi au vendredi de 9h à 5h. Euh, C'est-à-dire, si vous avez des cours que vous suivez normalement avec moi, euh, c'est le temps maintenant d'appeler de, 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 puis réserver, euh, justement. Euh, dans les autres magasins aussi, on commence à, à faire la même chose. Euh, tout le monde, les, les, les formateurs retournent au, euh, au, euh, au magasin pour donner les cours. Euh, J'espère encore que cet été, je vais pouvoir faire les, les, les sorties. Uh, now, uh, again, this week uh, is going to be, ne ne I should say next week, Monday. Starting Monday, I'm back at work full time. Uh, so I'll be giving classes uh, from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, uh, at this town. Uh, you'll be able to, so if you have any classes that we had to, well, obviously that we had to stop during the confinement, you'll be able to find us uh, now giving the private classes. Uh, the group classes for now, I was, I've been told, have been replaced by our online classes for now because uh, our classrooms are very small and, you know, confinement, uh, not confinement, but I should say isolation is going to be hard for the moment. Uh, so they're going to, we're going to continue giving our online classes, and we have a lot of new online classes coming. N'oubliez pas aussi que nous avons des, les cours de groupe en tant que tels qui étaient tous les semaines euh, durant le soir. Euh, on va, pour l'instant, va, vont être remplacés par les cours en ligne. Puis justement, on a des nouveaux cours qui sortent bientôt à, pro, euh, à propos des cours sur les appareils photos, euh, autant que des nouveaux euh, thèmes euh, de cours. Euh, photo de nuit va sortir bientôt pour ceux qui sont intéressés. Um, so we're going to go straight into the uh, analysis now that this is the third time I'm, I'm analyzing the photos. We had to cut two of the photos out thinking that that might be the problem where YouTube uh, dropped me uh, the last two times I tried doing this video. Um, so here we go. We're going to go straight into uh, our first image here, which was um, sent to us by Karin. Uh, who is also one of my um, students uh, through Gusline, who started taking uh, uh, um, 
I'm trying to think of a better word, but uh, the, the, um, uh, it was a series of five classes at the time. Uh, we still give it, uh, well, we, we're going to be converting it now for the online classes, but um, in this image here, uh, which is a beautiful image of her dog, um, the composition is, 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 is well, uh, still well um, presented, the subject is well presented, um, but the lighting, you know, uh, here and in this particular case, the image was shot in harsh sunlight from the window, which is not a, I mean, you know, we have to work with what we get. Uh, you know what? I keep forgetting. There's the image. Uh, so the image here is, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. This is the third time we're doing the same, the same one over. Let's take a little breath here. <coughs> Clear our throat. And I'm just going to, uh, let me see here. I want to see. Okay, so we're trying it again. Uh, receiving data. Stream is healthy. Good. Everything's good. Okay. So, <clears throat> again, uh, Karen did a good job with this image. What uh, the image could have used was um, exactly a little bit less light here. Uh, on the side of the uh, lit side of, of the dog's face. And to correct for this here, uh, there was two ways of doing it. We could have either used, uh, taken the exposure with the spot meter right in this area here under the eye, okay, which is closer to a gray, uh, medium gray, or on the gray here just above the nose, okay? And that what that would have done uh, what am I saying? Yeah, well, that would have given us a better light, but uh, typically the other way that you could have done this too was to just underexpose by maybe 0.3 or 0.7, minus 0.3, minus 0.7 stops of light, uh, otherwise known as minus one-third, two-thirds. Uh, so just be able to pull out a little bit more detail here in what is in the highlights. And, and, and typically with digital photography, that's what you want to do is you want to save the, 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 um, the whites or the, the highlights. Uh, and then if you want to later on readjust in post process, your shadows, because you always have more information still in your shadows than you do in your whites in your highlights. Okay. Uh, the other thing here that we could have done too, to just, you know, bring out the shadowed side of the dog here would have been to use a white reflector um, to the left of the dog to just bounce a little bit more light onto his face and bring out his eye uh, on the other side of his face too rather than having it so dark um, in this image. What Karen did do here and uh, fantastic uh, success with fantastic success is that she put the focus on the dog's eye and not the dog's muzzle. Okay, a lot of mistakes people make is they'll use the, um, basically, uh, when they're using their autofocus, they'll let the camera decide where to do the autofocus, and typically the camera will not always, now today, with more current um, or more recent um, cameras, you have what we call the eye focus function, uh, in the cameras, which the camera is supposed to be able to go and get the eye. And, excuse me, 80% of the time it works. Believe me now, also Sony, uh, Nikon, uh, I believe even Canon has, uh, they, it, it can differentiate from uh, human eyes and animal eyes, okay? But again, you know, these are functions, uh, these are automations that are built into the camera, and anytime there's an automation built into the camera, the camera can still make, and, and I usually, I calculate a margin of error of about anywhere from 20 to 30%, okay? A good photographer knows where the focus should be, so therefore the good, uh, you know, the photographer should put the focus point where it should be, okay? It's not to say that, it's not to judge people who use these functions. It's not at all. Um, but at a certain point, you know, um, the more that the camera becomes robotic, the more the, you know, the camera is trying to determine what kind of a f image you're trying to get. And a lot of times it might not be what you're looking for. Okay. Um, but here, Karen did a fantastic job. She went and got the right eye. 
Um, again, the other thing that we could have done here to open up the shadows was to turn the dog a little bit more towards the light of the window so that it would envelop the, the, the dog. Um, but in that case, then it would have been the left eye that would have been closer to the photographer where the focus should, should be. Okay. So, encore une fois, uh, cette photo qui est quand même une, une, une très bonne réussite en fonction de mise au point pour Karine, parce que justement, elle a été choisie, choisir l'œil qu'elle a, l'œil euh, du chien, et puis comme tel, tout, ben, tout, tout qui, m'ont, qui me connaît ou qui suit mes cours et sorties, ça sait très bien que je suis très, 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 très difficile là-dessus, que ça soit portrait, euh, ben, portrait, que ça soit euh, humain ou animal, il faut absolument que les yeux soient nets. C'est, c'est hyper, hyper, hyper important. Okay? Quand on regarde un créateur avec des yeux, la première chose qu'on voit, c'est les yeux. Fait que c'est, c'est les yeux qu'on voit, mais c'est ça que ça, c'est là où que le mise au point doit être. Pas sur le bout du nez, pas sur l'oreille, pas sur le cou, pas sur le, l'épaule, pas sur la poitrine. Réellement, les yeux. Okay? Tout autre, c'est secondaire. Now, en fonction de l'éclairage, oui, c'est un éclairage qui est pas mal dur, fort, mais écoute, ça c'est le, le temps du jour que Karine a décidé de prendre cette photo-là. Euh, et puis justement, le positionnement du soleil dans la fenêtre qui fait que le, 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 l'éclairage est très dur. Euh, typiquement, quand on fait de la photographie numérique, euh, c'est toujours une meilleure, euh, meilleure technique de d'essayer de sous-exposer un tantinet pour être capable de sauver les hautes lumières, pour au moins avoir une certaine, dé- une certaine qualité de détail là, et puis par après surexposer en fonction de post-traitement euh, le, 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 la partie qui est trop sombre. Euh, sinon, euh, physiquement, qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que Karine aurait pu faire aussi, c'est d'utiliser euh, un réflecteur blanc, pour jeter un peu plus d'éclairage sur le côté ombrageux. Mais aussi, euh, et justement, une autre façon de le faire, ça serait de positionner le, le chien un peu plus en angle avec la fenêtre pour que le, le, la lumière du fenêtre se, se euh, env- enveloppe le chien. Mais dans ce temps-là, ça leur a bougé les yeux, puis ça leur a mis cet œil gauche-là plus près. Et c'est là où le mise au point aurait dû être fait. Kudos, Karine. You did a good job on this one again. Fantastic job. Ah, crap. I don't know why they stuck, they stayed in there. I took them out and they stayed there. We'll see what happens. Give me a second. I want to see if this thing's going to blow up again. So, technically, I was sure I took those out. And for some reason, they stayed in there. Probably because I didn't do a refresh. Give me a second. F5. Yeah, and that's what I think I did. I forgot to do the refresh. Uh, a second. I'll be right back with you guys in just a sec. I'm just checking something real quick on the website. Now they've been removed. I forgot to do a refresh on the website. Okay. Uh, all this to say, yeah, I got four photos here. Perfect. Okay. Um, so now here we are with Mark's images. Uh, let me just pull up my OBS. Perfect. We're still there. Good. Okay. And I want to make sure that my stream is still working, still functioning. Yes, it is. Fantastic. We're looking good. I noticed there are four people who are watching. Fantastic. Sorry about the retakes. Okay, so here we have a fantastic image here from Mark. Beautiful of his wife, Lynn. Um, And again, Mark, just to reiterate so that everybody uh, hears. um, Lighting-wise, beautiful, fantastic for the black and white that it is. Um, you know, where, where you, and, and, and you've got the right combination of grays here, um, the light coming in, even though the light coming in from the, uh, from the window here is, um, 
harsh, okay, uh, because the sun is literally in that window. Um, you, the way that you have Lynn positioned here and the way that you're positioned here, uh, it, it envelops her face a little bit more so that the, the, the shadow, like we saw in the dog, the shadow's not as harsh as it was with the dog. Okay, so, I mean, you've adjusted. I'm just sorry. I'm a little bit preoccupied constantly looking at the YouTube uh, side of this to make sure that it's not... Um... So here, uh, the, the, the only real... Um, not this wrong one. We're in the wrong window. Sorry. This one here. Okay. This is what I wanted. We were talking about composition uh, in the last two retakes. Uh, we're going to do the same thing again, just so that everybody sees it. This is the image that you shot, but what you could have done was exactly removing that bookcase and then bringing Lynn more into... Now, again, this is something that I would have done uh, or, or could have done uh, more so in the... Um, sorry, I'm distracted again. I know. Um, this one here could have been done more with the uh, camera removing that, that bookcase. Ici, si on regarde très bien... La photo, excusez, la photo euh, d'origine ici, c'est est réellement, est-ce que cette partie-là de la bibliothèque, vu que la bibliothèque n'est pas complète non plus, est-ce que ça porte plus à la photo? Typiquement, non. Fait que si Marc aurait juste tassé l'appareil ou bougé l'appareil un peu plus à gauche ou, ou, ou viré un peu plus à gauche, il aurait enlevé, justement, ce bibliothèque-là. Et, justement, ça l'aurait donné un peu plus, comme genre dans, le fa dans la façon de... Non, l'autre côté, encore. So, vraiment, d'y aller chercher quelque chose comme ceci. Puis, ça l'aurait mis encore l'in plus en évidence, plus en importance. OK? Et c'est là où on parle souvent d'enlever l'inutile d'une un, photo. Okay? Et pas, pas nécessairement de l'enlever en post-traitement, parce qu'en post-traitement, vous avez vu, je l'ai fait en fonction de grossir la, fo la photo, puis en fonction de, de, de déplacer, on coupe, on perd tout l'espace le, le, négatif ici, euh, on coupe vraiment, tu sais, so, l'idée c'est plutôt de juste, puis ici ça va juste d'être euh, capable de, 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 de faire une rotation vers le gauche ou de bouger vers le gauche pour donner encore un peu plus d'espace ici euh, euh, devant où ce que Lynn est en train, est en train de, de regarder. OK. On va juste faire ça, comme ça. Perfect. Back. Puis si on regarde l'autre photo que Marc a pris, ici, encore, une encore, Marc, il s'est ajusté un peu, ok, mais encore, ça n'a été pas juste à, encore assez. Euh, puis aussi, dans les deux photos, euh, Marc a bien réussi quand même la mise au point. Est-ce que je suis encore, am I still on here? Yes, I am. Ok, good. And again, in this particular image here, um, Marc is, 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 the crop is a little bit, is, has been corrected, just it's still not enough. I mean, it would have been better to crop out this part of the, 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 the library still. Here, uh, Lynn is looking out, in, out at the window, but still there's enough light coming in and, and, and enveloping her uh, that, I mean, the shadowed side of her face is not, uh, it's, it's not too harsh, uh, even though um, the light is. Uh, the other comment um, I'd make over here is that you have Lynn uh, you, in a profile, and, 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 and in portrait, we want to try to be a little bit more on an angle so that we can see her other eye just, uh, just past the bridge of her nose rather than seeing really the, 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 um, the profile of her face like this. Specifically, that you want to do this also when people have, tend to have long noses or, 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 or just very uh, 
large nose. Not that Lynn has a large nose or anything like that, but notice how, um, you know, her nose protrudes from her face here, that if you were a little bit more to the side, to the left, and seen a little bit more of her, and actually, I don't know if I can do it with myself here with that, in, well, actually, you know what, I can do it this way. If I were to do this, so here I am face on, if I were to turn myself like so, notice how my nose is balanced with the cheek here when I turn myself right up, up to a limit up to here. If I were to do this, now you really see the contour of my face. Right? Tandis que si on inclut juste un, un tantinet l'œil, euh, dans mon cas, moi, ma, mon œil droit, ben maintenant mon nez change en fonction de volume. Parce que maintenant, oups, maintenant j'ai ce joue-là et l'œil-là qui va permettre de rapetisser en, encore plus le nez. OK? So we'll go back over here. And then we have Karen's uh, photo of the eyes of her, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is her child or, or niece or nephew, um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful example of the eyes. The light here is fantastic. It's, it's soft. So, you know, the light is not directly in the, in the window. We can actually see the window here under the reflection of what's in the window, uh, or I should say what's past the window. Uh, you can see the, 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 the window right here. Uh, and again, you know, window light is, if you want soft window light, you need to really photograph when the sun is past the window itself. Okay. Um, when you want to, when you want that harsher light, uh, like the light that was on the dog, um, then, you know, you would do that on the side of the building w uh, where the window is literally in the sunlight, okay? Um, but when it comes to children, you don't really always want to have that harsh light. You really want to have a softer light, uh, you know. Uh, here again, uh, uh, Karen has uh, properly focused on the eye. Uh, you can see that even in the iris, you can see the little details in the iris here. Uh, the eyelashes, and then just at the at the limit of where the eyelashes are, even even though she used a 5.6 over here, um, you know, um, she starts to lose her depth of field. And and and, and in, in this particular image, she included that that left eye too, which which just adds more to the facial feature of that one eye. Okay, you see. Uh, L'exposition est très bien réussie, la mise au point est très bien réussie, est vraiment faite sur le, le, le... Même, on dirait que, le, le... tu sais, qu'est-ce qui a aidé aussi à faire la mise au point ici, c'est que elle avait l'éclat le, le, de la lumière, les réflexions dans, dans l'éclat de la lumière que la mise au point où ce qui a été fait, euh, que tout ici, est pa... son œil est parfaitement net, jusqu'à peu près la sourcie. Puis après ça, l'avant-plan tombe en... en justement, euh, en hors foyer, et l'arrière-plan aussi tombe complètement hors foyer. Fait que, tu sais, c'est un, un parfait exemple d'utiliser de, 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 la, la lumière de la fenêtre euh, dans cette photo-là. Fantastique, Karine. Euh, Marc, beautiful. Lynn, so far, I'm thinking that that might be the problem because I still have a feed here. Uh, <laughs> but um, you got the gist of, of, of what I said, I hope. Um, and again, it's not judgment. It's 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 just it's it's how c how can we shoot better images, okay? Um, today, I'm go we're going to launch our uh, next weekly challenge, and our next weekly challenge uh, this week will be um, perspective photography. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get into some examples of perspective photography. So perspective photography is playing with perspective. Our perspective, and it could be, you know what, I'm even going to extend this to, because there's a lot of images that, that, that I've, you can, you can really play even with montages. Okay. Uh, I try to keep it as much in camera as possible, like this perspective over here of this gentleman or this photographer who's taking the um, canyon here at the base of his feet, or 
this perspective over here of uh, this photographer uh, doing a selfie of himself, okay, here. Um, again, this is a beautiful image here for perspective, okay. So, you know, the perspective of the what the photographer is shooting his image. So, you know, we have his feet dangling off the uh, edge of the of the cliff um and you have that landscape there uh, to really put into context uh where the photographer is. Um la, la prochaine justement la prochaine um défi hebdomadaire c'est de photographier la perspective en perspective et puis justement euh, tu sais je, je pourrais le, 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 le lancer en fonction de faire qu'est-ce qu'on appelle des perspectives forcées we can go as far as if you want to try it's going to take a little bit more work but we also have images which we call our um, forced perspectives and these are really I mean this really comes from um, graphic art okay in where you're taking two photos to make a to make a single photograph a photograph so in this particular image here we have a photographer who's holding his phone and what he's done is he's projected um his telephone as the street here okay uh you can you can try this at home if you like uh, there was another nice one here that was interesting this one here uh forced perspective okay we call this on appelle ça la perspective uh, forcée euh, parce que justement, c'est que euh, soit que la tasse a été tenue devant l'appareil photo euh, en relation avec la personne qui est en train de, 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 de tenir d'un air. So either this one here, this you could play, and this you could play totally this with your own, um, uh, voyons, with, you know, you can do this one of two ways. Is either you can photograph the glass in the sky and then you know, photograph the, the, the person trying to hold up a glass or hold up something over their head. Or you can actually try to photograph with the glass physically uh, in perspective with, um, with, the, uh, with the subject trying to hold it up. A lot of times we'll use this forced perspective with um, uh, travel photography where you'll have somebody holding out their hand, whoops, like this here, and in the background, you might have the pyramids, or you might have the Eiffel Tower. Parce que c'est faisable de le faire physiquement sur place. Ça dépend juste le focal que vous utilisez, puis la façon que vous vous placez en fonction de la photographe, puis le sujet qui fait justement... Uh, le, le, le mouvement qui est là. Am I still on here? Yes, I'm still on. Okay, good. Now, uh, if you want some tips, there was a couple of websites that I did uh, find on perspective um, photography. Uh, this per this particular photographer here from where's the website? The website is uh, pretty photographer. Uh, what is it? It's pretty Photoshop actions. Um, well. It's from LightroomPresets.com, um, but basically you can uh, change your well change your perspective. Here's one where you you photograph up or down, so either um, photographing uh, from a low angle up towards the subject or from a higher angle down towards the subject. Okay, that's one that's one perspective that you can use. Uh, you can also uh, shoot from lying down shoot from the ground level and shooting straight up okay that changes your perspective also sorry my YouTube over here is actually distracting me um, using leading lines okay in this particular case leading lines are from the building here okay uh, which brings us up to the arch here of the other building or maybe the canopy that was over over the photographer's head um, using perspective, photographing through objects. Uh, through objects could be crystal balls. Uh, uh, there's well, there's one crystal ball that's very popular nowadays. It's called the lens ball. 
um, and using a macro lens you can actually fake having a literally a wide angle lens uh, and it gives all kinds of light rays and colors and stuff like that so encore uh, excusez uh, avant de d'y de, aller plus loin soit photographier photographier en plongée ou en contre plongée ça c'est une perspective que vous pouvez utiliser c'est sûr euh, vous pouvez aussi photographier coucher euh, à terre et vers le ciel en utilisant des, des lignes de, de, de guide euh, pour nous emmener vers un, un, un certain élément euh, vous pouvez photographier à travers des objets, euh, spécifiquement celui que, 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 qui vient en tête, c'est qu ce qu'on appelle, euh, vous pouvez le trouver aussi sur l'Internet, sur qui est très populaire depuis euh, un an ou deux, euh, ça s'appelle le Lens Ball, c'est une boule de cristal, moi j'en ai un, j'en ai un de 80 mm, et puis si Annick euh, il regarde l'épisode, le, 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 euh, je l'ai depuis qu'elle est là aussi, puis je ne l'ai pas utilisé encore, mais ça serait aussi une façon de, 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 de une perspective que vous pourriez. Voici exactement l'exemple d'avoir un, 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 un lens ball. Excusez. And the lens ball, what it does is, because it's a, it's a sphere, it literally reverses the image. Right, so you know that you know while we're photographing and the image is coming into the camera, when the when when the light rays hit the nodal point, and the nodal point is where the light crosses. It actually flips the image upside down onto the sensor, and then the camera's computer turns it back and flips it proper so that we can see it. Putting a lens ball, which is 360 degrees spherical, what it does is it the the image comes into the lens ball flips the image in the lens ball and then flips it again in the back in the camera and in the camera it becomes upside down so what we're do what we're actually shooting from the lens ball is the same pers well not the same perspective but it's a reversed perspective of what we see uh, in the um, in the in the image another perspective would be just to fill the frame with an element in this particular case here filling the frame with flowers or trees, or leaves. Uh, remplir le, le cadre au complet avec l'élément que vous êtes en train de photographier. C'est un autre, c'est justement une perspective que vous pouvez utiliser uh, dans ce projet-là. Um, placer quelque chose en, uh, puis ça aussi, uh, comme que je vous avais montré les, les, les deux photos que je vous avais montrées, en fonction du um, euh, perspective forcée, c'est exactement un parfait exemple ici aussi, c'est de mettre quelque chose euh, dans l'avant-plan versus le sujet que vous, avez, vous êtes en train de photographier dans l'arrière-plan. Uh, so here, we, this is again, this is another perfect example of forced perspective. So here we have a little heart cut out, uh, cut out of a heart here in, in, held in the hand of the photographer. And yet we have the Eiffel Tower in the background, and the heart and the, and the Eiffel Tower look to be the same size. Use reflections. Use mirror reflections. Use window reflections. These are perfect. You know, uh, this is a perfect perspective of what's behind, what I've passed, as far as 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 far as where I'm going to, what's behind me, what I'm leaving behind. Uh, justement, uh, une, per une belle perspective aussi, c'est de toujours aller chercher les réflexions, les miroirs. Euh, or les réflexions dans les miroirs, euh, c'est-à-dire que je suis en train de m'avancer, puis qu'est-ce qui, qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que je suis en train de laisser euh, à l'arrière euh, de mon passage. Um, fait, tu sais, je veux dire, perspective, you can have so much fun with it. And again, I'm going to place these um, these websites that I, that we have here. This is one here, expertphotography.com, who did an article. Craig Hull did an article on perspective and photography. So I'll put these things up in the uh, in the episode notes, uh, in the comments, so that you can, uh, you know, uh, perfect here. Per perspective photography looks at two areas. The definitions are the spatial relationship between objects within an image. Perspective makes a two-dimensional photograph feel like a three-dimensional scene. It's also the reason why many uh, compositional uh, techniques work. 
uh, from leading lines to balanced weight to shadow depth of shallow depth of field. Definition two is our point of view, or the placement of the film sensor plane in relation to the subject. Okay, um, you know what? I'm going to do this really quick. Go here. No, sorry, not there. We're going to do this like so. Go there. And just to get you the definition really quick, bring this one back. That should be that one there. Fait que, justement, attendez deux secondes, la relation spatiale entre les objets d'une image, le, la perspective donne l'impression d'une photographie en deux dimensions comme un scène en trois dimensions. C'est aussi la raison pour laquelle euh, les nombreuses techniques de composition fonctionnent. Euh, des lignes de... Les, bon, OK, c'est pas des lignes d'attaque, c'est des lignes de composition, euh, soit le poids d'équilibre euh, ou euh, au faible... Voyons. Le poids, c'est-à-dire la pesanteur en tant que tel, le, le poids de, de, de deux éléments, euh, l'équilibre ou faible profondeur de champ, euh, définition numéro 2, notre point de vue. Euh, ou la position de la plan de le, ou ce que le capteur euh, par rapport au sujet. Okay. So uh, I'll be putting all these sites here up into up in the show notes uh, so that you can see perspective from a physical standpoint. Um, you've got I mean you've got you know moving from left to right, uh, moving up and down. You've got all kinds of of of, of you know just photograph this week using subjects that you can photograph from different perspectives and see what kind of perspectives really bring out the element that you're photographing. Okay? Uh, not to cut this short, uh, <laughs> though this is the third time I've done this episode, I've learned my lesson, I think, because we're still going live here. I'd like to thank specifically Lynn and Mark for their help in finding out what my problem was that was um sorry uh well, you know, what's going on here how come i can't oh because i'm not in there we go uh have i been all oh here we go so no i um, mark did you i just i'm gonna shout out to mark for a quick sec did you see the website examples i showed you yes or no I'm just waiting for Mark. Okay, good. Pan fantastic. Thank you, Mark, for your help. Merci, Lynn, for votre patience. Thank you, everybody who stuck around for uh, the technical difficulties that I was having here. Uh, again, I apologize. I just listen, we learn something new every day. Now I understand. Now, just just to show you exactly how YouTube uh, checks the the video feeds that are going through. Uh, it looks like it was really that Windows logo that was uh, so far uh, so, so I guess so large in the uh, in the image that that flagged the um, flagged the uh, photo as being a copyright infringement. Well, here we go. So I'm going to close with this, guys. Enjoy, have fun, have a wonderful weekend. Um, thank you for your support, your continual support. Thank you for uh, participating. If you like the episode, even with all the problems we had this evening, if you like the episode, please like it uh, in the show notes. And uh, if you have anything that you would like to comment on about the video, please, by all means, do so. Um, it's only that way that I'll know what people are looking for. Um, merci à tous pour votre participation. Merci pour votre support. C'est très apprécié. Uh, je vous souhaite une très belle fin de semaine, une très belle semaine. Um, et puis, justement, uh, je vais annoncer d'ici lundi quand est-ce que je vais faire mon, mon premier spécial uh, où ce que je vais rouvrir un salle uh, pendant une heure ou le temps que une heure, une heure et demie, ça me dérange pas, um, durant la semaine pour justement euh, introduire un nouveau façade de, de la, la du euh, du shine 
Um, don't worry, Lynn. <laughs> Poor Lynn. She feels bad. Don't worry about it. Nobody knew. Um, but uh, thank you again, though, for your for your patience and thank you for your for your participation. J'espère de vous voir encore la semaine prochaine pour le nouveau défi. Uh, et puis justement, uh, je te souhaite très une très belle soirée. Merci. Bonne soirée à tous.